Resolution 413, the chair would recognize um, the secretary of this committee, uh, Representative Beer. Phil. Bill Kent will be uh, helping us out from uh, Pro English. And to my left is Tim Schultz from uh, U.S. English. I forgot to mention that Mr. Kent is now also a noted author. <laughs> and he signed a book for me a little while ago, so I was very uh, yes, excited. He signed for the chairman. <laughs> I'll horrible. scratch my name out and put it on yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible oversight for the chairman. <laughs> We appreciate having both of you here with us today. Representative Beardman. Yeah, I've learned a long time ago that it's good to train yourself by experts that's better than you when you're doing something. So uh, that's why I wanted them up there. And I appreciate them coming up and taking their time out of their busy schedule to testify today. And I appreciate the committee being here to listen to what we're trying to do here on House Resolution 413. House Resolution 413 is a constitutional amendment to make English the official language of Georgia. Currently in Georgia, you can, I'm sorry, right now in Georgia there is a bill that states that English is the official language, but it's a very weak bill. It allows county cities to do all types of other documents in any other language other than English. And what brought this to my attention was House Bill 21. That's a bill I did last year and when it was in the other committee, we was getting a lot of phone calls from across the state. And we felt that it was very important from listening to the phone calls, the emails, that we put this to the people of Georgia. We think it's very important to allow the citizens' voices to be heard. <clears throat> right now, across, this, across the nation, there are six other states that's made English the official language of their, uh, of their state. Alabama passed it in 1990. Arizona passed in 2006 with well over 70% of the vote. California in 1986, Colorado in 88, Florida in 88, Hawaii in 78. <clears throat> what this does is protects the English language in our state. There are, there are many things being done right now in our state. One is by the Department of Driver Services where you can take a driver's exam in I believe 14 different languages. But yes, driving into the Capitol this morning, every street sign I saw was only in one language. I believe it's a public safety issue also to make sure all these signs, are, or that with these signs being in English, that you take the test in English to make sure that you can read the signs and make sure it's safe to operate that motor vehicle. If you look at the bill, there are several things this bill does that promotes English, allow English to be, continue to be taught in other languages. And I'm going to point you to page 2, line 14. From line 14 <laughs> to about line 25, I believe, are all the, all the exceptions were put into the, into the uh, resolution to teach or encourage the learning of languages other than English to protect the public health or safety, to teach English to those who are not fluent in the language, to comply with the Federal Native American Language Act, the Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or any other federal law, to protect the rights of criminal defendants and victims of crime, to promote trade, commerce, and tourism, and to create or promote state agencies' mottos inscribed in public monuments. What we did, basically, we took the language pretty much from Arizona and incorporated it here in Georgia. And at the proper time, there was a um, incident in Alabama that we need to make one sentence change in this resolution and I said at the proper time I asked for that to be accepted. I'm going to let, because this came up to, this came up to me, uh, I'm going to let Tim speak first and give you some information to why it's so important that English is the official language. And make sure that people assimilate into our culture. I believe it was Roosevelt who said, we should have a hyphenated America. You're Americans when you become American <coughs> citizens. 
and for over 200 years there's always been just one common bond that held us together no matter where we came from. That's been the English language. It should be and it needs to be protected. But with that, I'm going to let Tim give some uh, information that has to do with when you learn, the more you learn English, the better you can take care of yourself, the more money you make. English is the language of business in the world. So with that, I'll turn that over to Tim for just a few minutes. Thank you, Representative Beer, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Your uh, last name again. Tim Schultz. Thank you. As I said, um, my name is Tim Schultz, uh, Director of Government Relations for U.S. English. Uh, we are a public policy organization uh, with 1.8 million members nationwide, including uh, more than 20,000 in the state of Georgia. And we were founded in 1983 uh, by then Senator S.I. Hayakawa uh, of California, who was himself an immigrant. And today our chairman is Mauro Imuhika, who is uh, also an immigrant and a naturalized citizen from Chile, uh, and is also proud uh, that he is fluent in five languages. Um, I, like probably almost everyone in this room, uh, have a story that I can trace back to uh, my great-grandparents uh, coming to the United States as immigrants and learning the common language, and I think that's part of the reason why this issue uh, resonates uh, so much with so many people, because everybody has a family story, or most everybody has a family story that they can trace back and trace when they became an American, and how integral learning English is in that process. Um, today I want to really uh, talk, and hopefully convince you, of two facts, which I don't think are very controversial. The first is, is that Georgia is currently facing an unprecedented challenge uh, what with respect to language that Georgia has never faced in its history. And second, I hope to convince you that the legislature has a role in dealing and addressing this challenge. So let's first, let's just talk about what the challenge is. Uh, according to the U.S. Census, uh, their most recent numbers, in 1980, in the state of Georgia, there were about 44,000 people, the residents of the state, who were what they called limited English provision. That was in 1980. We need a constitutional amendment in light of the fact that we've now had the statute, which uh, is very, very similar in content uh, for 10 years. I would say that the, the statute is, there are some similarities, but the statute really doesn't really get into prescribing the operations of state agencies, as really, at all. It, it has some nice things about the English language and the common language, but in terms of actual real specific guidance to state agencies. It, it really doesn't have that. And so I think that's, that's the reason. I think that a, a more precise policy, and again, we're talking about, um, you know, as you said, 98, so about a decade of experience. Uh, state agencies are not necessarily, they're, they're not really, English is not really in practice the official language of uh, the way state agencies operate because there's no prescriptive advice. They're kind of free to do whatever they want. And so I would say that's the reason. Thank you. If I could dovetail too, Mr. Sure. Chairman, uh, over in Alabama, they do have a constitutional amendment mandating English as the official language of government. And it was up, uh, upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court in 2001 by the Sandoval decision. And so that obviously is a, is a strengthening uh, factor if you have a constitutional amendment, because in many other states, I think there's about 30 states now that have similar, similar uh, official English statutes, but that is the strongest Alabama's actually was upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. And, and I, I would also mention, Representative Bearden uh, mentioned the Arizona uh, initiative, ballot initiative passed in 2006, and that's very similar in language to this, to this initiative. Um, it's telling that even though there were a lot of sky is falling <coughs> proclamations from some of the opponents of that initiative, there hasn't been a lawsuit uh, challenging the constitutionality <coughs> of that most recent Arizona law that passed in 2006. That law is in effect. Uh, the sky hasn't fallen, and the predictions that many of the people, uh, many of the opponents made, which are almost identical bill, um, you know, haven't come true. Um, and nor, nor has it been struck down as unconstitutional or anything like that. And also